All right, we're going to start talking about a new type of number. Now, the numbers we had before, the whole numbers, right, whole numbers, and their friends, the integers, which had negative versions of these, always have a gap of one between the numbers. You can think of it as a steps. You're on a step, or you're on the next step, but you're not standing somewhere in the middle. Now we know our reality tends to be smooth. And so what we did was we invented a new type of number. And that number that we're going to study first are called rational numbers. And there, the root of the word rational numbers is ratio or fraction. And um, what we want to do is kind of define this. Now, before I jump into the actual material in the chapters, we're, do, we're just going to look at, at the idea of where the fraction might come from. And so I'm going to look at something we did before, which is division. So I have 10 tick marks here. And I can cut these into groups of two. And what I can say is 10 divided by 2 equals 5. This is our concept of division so far. But I can also write this as 10 divided by 2 equals 5. And this made sense with the whole numbers. When we think of fractions, what we can think about is the idea of taking some whole thing, one whole thing, and we divide it into pieces. Now these pieces are smaller than the whole. And so if I were to look at one of these pieces, I would have one divided into four parts. And so conceptually, it's taking an individual thing, and div a one, and dividing it into four parts. It does the same thing as division, but conceptually, we, we kind of think of the actions as two separate things. To the patterns of numbers, these are equivalent meanings. It just happens that we can write this as a whole number, while we can't write this as a whole number. And so as we look at these definitions, we want to explore that. I will say that fractions tend to um, bug people in mathematics. And I think the reason for that is if I were to put, um, let's see, 3 sevenths and um, 3 sevenths, let me do a quick, and 10 twenty-firsts, natively, I'm, I'm not sure which one of these numbers is bigger or smaller. We have to do some work to compare fractions. Well, if I were to write 3 and 8, I, I can see that 8 is bigger than 3. And so when we look at numbers, we, we kind of want an intuitive meaning of how big they are. What's our answers look like and how can we measure them? And fractions always kind of trip that up. And so the thing I tried to say to people when we begin studying fractions is look at this thing as just a number. I am not sure how big it is. And that's okay. We can operate on it, do things with it, and when we need to know how big it is, we will have some tools to figure that out. And so we'll get some different things to do with fractions. The rules might seem odd, but remember in the end, it is just some number. And I hope that we can see as we've been going through this, numbers are powerful things. It's a language we made to count up so that we don't have to count everything. We can give them a name. What well, also means that we can talk about parts of things. A good rule of thumb is the, well, not even a good rule of thumb, 
but the bigger the, the, the small the bottom number is, the denominator, the smaller the piece. If I were to cut this into 21 pieces, they'd be very small pieces compared to these four. And so that, that's going to be kind of one of the first things we look at is what are the size of the individual pieces? And then we have to figure out how many of those pieces do we have? So let, let's um, begin our exploration here and let's try to um, kind of get an idea of what fractions are and how they come out. So first, I'm just going to write one. I'm going to do 5 over 6 and it has two parts. We call this the numerator and the denominator. Let's see if I can get my spelling right today. Denominator. Now I have seen um, professors from mainland Europe, they'll, they'll say upstairs and downstairs. For us, the, the position has meaning. The downstairs is how many parts our whole thing was cut into, and our upstairs is the thing that was cut apart. So this is saying, I've taken five things, and I've cut it into six parts. No, that's not right. How would I want to say that? I've taken one thing, trying to get my wording right here, and I've broken it. Two, one, two, three. Into six equal parts. And I'm going to keep five of them. And so the thing I have is equivalent of one thing broken into six parts, but I only have five of them. So the first thing we can say is if the denominator is greater than the numerator, our fraction is less than 1. And I will have to admit, we'll have to say this in the terms of um, absolute values, because I can have negative fractions also uh, as part of what we do or create here. And that shading representation is a good way to talk about how we, we're trying to represent, um, how we're trying to re represent a whole. Well, there are two types of fractions. Well, there is a proper fraction where the numerator is less than the denominator. And so we could think of 8 and 1 thirds. Well, that's a proper fraction. So is 3 eighths. Right? Different numbers, but both proper fractions. Then we have an improper fraction where the numerator is greater than the denominator. Let me get some more space here. Numerator is greater than denominator. This English part of this gets me all the time. And so 25 thirds is an improper fraction. In fact, it is the same improper fraction as 8 and 1 thirds. Now, what we will find as we go through and use these things is that proper fractions and in this case, a mixed fraction mixed number, 
both wordings are separate. And so this is mixed, and this is improper. Mixed fractions are how we like to describe them. For me, I can see that this is the number 8 plus a little bit more. I don't see that immediately here. But you will find, so proper fractions, we tend to say. This gives us a better measure. Improper fractions, we calculate with. As you learn the rules of fractions, a lot of them will be easier if we use the improper version of it. And so that's one of the jugglings we have to get to when we um, start learning fractions is um, really to kind of get used to them in improper form to help make our calculations easier and then converting them to mixed form so we can speak them so that we can convey the information. Now, the fr fractions have some neat properties. If I take any whole number, where n does not equal 0, then if I have some number divided by itself, that's equal to 1. And this is really a, an idea from the identity, where I have 1 times n equals n, that identity property of multiplication. And if I divide both sides by n, I get the 1 equals n over n. And so if I take any number, 3 over 3, that's 1. 6 over 6 is 1. Now if I take 0 over any number, I get 0. And what this is saying is I have 0 parts of something that's cut into n pieces. Well, I'm having 0 parts, I have 0. And this says if I cut something up into eight pieces, and I have all eight pieces, well, I've got the whole. Well, what else do we have that we, that we can um, get from this? Well, if I take any number and divide it into one part, I have that number back. If I cut four into one piece, I have four. The only weird thing, and it comes back to division, is if I cut something into zero pieces, well, that makes no sense. And so we say this is undefined. I can't break something in, into zero pieces. It doesn't mean I don't have anything, and it doesn't mean that the pieces are, are small. So um, we have to kind of come up with a system where we avoid undefined things. And we talked about that a little bit in division. Let me clear my blackboard here, and I'll look at mixed numbers in a little detail. So when I talked about mixed numbers, I said we would like to convert them to proper fractions. And so I'm going to show you the steps in the book done graphically. So the steps in the book is multiply the whole number, the whole number, by the denominator add the numerator to the result place the result over the original denominator Well, what this looks like with 8 and 1 third. And so I would say this 8 and a third is I'm going to multiply this. So that's 24. And then I'm going to add the 1. So that's 25 over 3. And so I see it as a graphical thing when I do it. I multiply this 
All right, so that's times. Then I add this. That slides over, and that answer slides over. And that's that's how I calculate. Um, I'm taking a mixed number and turning it into an improper fraction. So let's do one. Let's do five and two sevenths. So I have five and two sevenths. So I'm going to multiply this way. Seven times five is 35. Then I'm going to add this way. 35 plus two equals 37 sevenths. And again, we'll find these are easier to calculate. These are easy to talk about. Well, we can also go backwards. This is a two directional thing. So to turn an improper fraction to a mixed number, we treat it like a division. And so 25 eighths, I would turn this into a division. And 8 goes into 25 three times with a remainder of 1. And so the quotient becomes the whole number, and the remainder gets placed over the original divisor. So divide the number, Which is really what the fraction is suggesting. This is a division. The quotient is the whole number. The remainder over the divisor makes the fractional part. I'll see you in section two. Um, play with these. Get, get used to them. We can put them on a number line. right? We can space them out. And one of the ways we'll work on doing that is really kind of thinking if this is 0 to 1, then this would be 1 half. This would be 1 fourth. This would be 3 fourths. And we start spacing them about. They can be greater than, than or um, equal to each other, and we'll start comparing them. Small, larger denominators make smaller numbers. The same denominator with more parts is bigger, and we'll we'll, we'll learn how to compare these as we progress.